Hey, what's going on? I uh, wanted to make a video today talking about NixOS. Uh, we can kind of look at the the installation and um, you know talk about what makes NixOS interesting. Um, I think it's a really interesting operating system that doesn't really get a lot of discussion when it comes to Linux because um, it's it's multiple things, right? So it's the Nix package manager, which works on Mac and most Linux distributions, but it's also uh, an entire operating system. We look at NixOS. It uses uh, the same package manager. Um, it's a very lightweight, uh, clean distribution, in my opinion, um, and it's something I'm going to throw personally on a very uh, simple server I have um, that's you know kind of low power, and I think it's going to have a lot of strengths being Nix OS on it instead of something a bit more full fat like Ubuntu. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to be following along the Nix OS manual today. So we're on version 2105. Um, I've got this running in a virtual machine with two gigabytes of RAM, eight gigabytes of storage, and two cores and four threads. Um, and yeah, so we can uh, pretty much have this act like a bare metal server, but it just makes it a bit easier for me to build it up and tear it down as I've been testing it, right? So um, I spent a little bit of time in the operating system and um, it just, it has really interesting features in terms of um, especially the configuration and the, uh, the file management or the package management really through a file. Um, I think that makes it really beneficial for something like uh, infrastructure as code and cloud, which you know is uh, really popular buzzwords today right now. So I think it just has a lot of benefits that um, aren't fully being realized um, in the current current space with uh, you know Ubuntu really dominating, and then number two being you know CentOS or uh, whatever's going to replace CentOS. Right? I was looking at Alma Linux the other day, and I'm a big fan. But um, here we are. We are in the terminal. So first thing I'm going to do, so I'm just going to do sudo su into root. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this too much, um, but for just installing it, you're going to be all right, right? We're sitting on an ISO image, sitting on a uh, USB drive. Um, there's not going to be too much that can go wrong here running in root, and it just makes it a little bit easier for installation. So let's get into it. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you, we already have DHCP. We're hooked up through Ethernet, so I'm running on 10.0.2.15. So we don't really need to worry about setting up wireless, even though it does allow that. And you can see that in the guide I'll show you. Um, that's going to be the basic things you need to know. And then also, I have been playing around with it. So we do have a couple partitions already sitting actually here. So if you do an LSBLK, you'll see we already have an SDA1 and an SDA2, but we'll be wiping over those. Um, but SR0 is going to be where your um, boot drive sits. It might be on SDB or something else, depending on um, how you mount the drive. But for me, it's be and sitting on SR0, which is what we're currently inside of. So let's go down to installing. So it's got some prerequisites above. Um, of You can download a VirtualBox format, or you can just download the ISO. Even though I'm using VirtualBox, I am using the ISO, trying to give you the, uh, the full bare metal experience. Um, but yeah, first thing they're going to recommend is that you have networking going. So they also recommend checking ifconfig. Um, and then if you have to use WPA supplicant to set up a wireless device, you can do that, but that's not something we're going to really need to work on with the server, right? So um, from there, we're going to go into partitioning and formatting. So I'm going to personally be using the legacy boot, uh, MBR. It's a bit more what I'm comfortable with, um, and this is going on an older server once I actually install this on bare metal, so it's a bit better for me. It's what I've been testing, but definitely feel free to also use uh, you know, UEFI and GPT. So let's get into it. Um, first command we're going to run is going to be sudo parted. We're going to do that on slash dev slash sda1, or sda, excuse me. And now that we're in parted, we can do a make label. And since we're doing this um, as a legacy system, we're going to make it as ms dos. It's going to ask you if you want to delete everything. You can say yes. Um, and then from there, you're going to do a make part primary. You're going to set it to one megabyte, flag one gigabyte uh, and that's going to set our primary partition on SDA1 and then we can make a swap partition if you want to I'm going to set one up just to show you how so it's also going to be a primary uh, it's going to be a Linux swap and we're going to set it to one gigabyte uh, at 100% there we go so you're done with that control C clear out of parted it's going to say you might need to update your uh, etc fstab, but that's not going to be something we're going to do because after we install this uh, this operating system, you know, we're never going to see uh, the ISO again, right? So following along in the guide, then you want to go down into formatting. And what's really neat is um, this has ButterFS, it has uh, ext4, it's got FAT. 
So it's going to meet whatever needs you have. It's nice to see ButterFS really coming into the mainstream, but because the guy's recommending ext4, let's go through with that, right? So do an uh, mkfs or make file system and reset to ext4. Set the label as nixos. Then on dev slash sda1. And for me, it's going to say there already is one that exists, but that's not going to come up for you. So we're going to proceed anyways. And then from there, we can set our swap. So we're going to do a make swap flag L to set the label. We're going to call it swap. We're going to do it on dev slash sda2. And then from there, we're going to need to turn swap on. So it's just going to be swap on slash dev sda2. Swap is ready to go. And uh, lastly, it's going to show you um, to. Uh, after turning your swap on to mount the drive, right? So there's that mount. But some interesting things as well is you can use LVM uh, if you need to. And then you can also use MD admin or multi disk administration. So that's really nice if you want to like um, pre configure your drives or if you have uh, a standardized setup or if you want to even set RAID on your boot drive, right? So that's a, it's an alternative way instead of just using your motherboard. So uh, from here, we're just going to mount the drive, right? So we're going to do mount slash dev slash sda1 and we're going to put that at slash mnt so just to make sure that went through we can do a df flag h you can do it also an lsblk you're going to see sda1 is on slash mnt uh, both from df and from lsblk and you're going to see our sda2 is running as a swap so we've got all that configured and now it's time to actually install nixos right so it's got this really neat command. This is kind of where you do have to follow the manual because there's no way you would have known this command going into this. It's going to be nixos generate config by get type uh, flag flag root. You're going to put that into mount, which is that SDA1 device, right? Once you're there, it's going to recommend you use nano, but I'm kind of a vim guy, so we're going to do vim on mount, etc. Uh, or etc nixos and then configuration.nix. And there we go. So this is the uh, like the configuration file, and this is something you can like very easily uh, pull into distributions if you're setting up you know, a huge cloud setup and you have a cluster of servers. Um, this is a really neat way to do it. Um, but it's just a bit more standardized, right? So the biggest thing here is it, whether you're running BIOS or UEFI, you're going to need to set some bootloader pro uh, parameters. So go down here and you're going to go to bootloader.grub.device. That's going to be for BIOS uh, or legacy, right? Um, and then UEFI is going to be looking at bootloader.systemdboot. So not exactly what we're using, but you, see, you, know, you set that bootloader grub device to dev SDA. Uh, and then let's play around a little bit with some configuration here. So networking.hostname, let's say we don't want that default, change this to like my NixOS, right? And give it some customization. Um, then you can set a time zone if you need to. We'll just leave it on the standard Amsterdam. That'll be fine for our testing environment here. Um, and then you've got some nice stuff here. So you've got use DHCP, and we're going to have that set to false. Um, and it's going to be saying interfaces ENP 0 S3, which is the interface I'm currently using. It's going to set use DHCP to true. So you can kind of change this as you'd like. So let's say we don't want that. We can turn that off. Uh, or we can just leave it on. And since I'm kind of just using DHCP, I'm going to leave that on for now. Uh, but you might want to set that to a static IP, right? Um, and then if you have a proxy, you can set that up there. It does a really great job of walking you through this. Um, X11 for windowing, if you're going to run a desktop environment, you might want that. Uh, set your key maps for X11. Cups if you want a printer. I'm not going to turn on a printer, but let's say we want to turn on sound. So we can do sound.enable equals true. And we can turn on pulse audio as well, right? Uh, if you want touchpad support, not going to be super important to me again because I'm running this through SSH. Um, you can define a user account here. You can also do it after the installation. So that's really going to be um, depending on, again, if you're using this as infrastructure as code or if you're just kind of setting this up as a normal install. We'll do that after the fact and just use root in the meantime, right? So going down here, um, this is really neat. So this is the uh, package search. So if you wanted to search for wget, that's the syntax you use. but um, if you want to have some pre-installed packages, you're just going to want to set these parameters open, right? So you're opening that list, and we're going to, by default, install vim and wget. I'm going to ignore Firefox, because that's uh, not going to be super useful to us running a server, but let's say we want to add htop, right? So that's how you do that. Moving down further, um, SSA support, for sure, we're going to want that one on. Um, 
So we can open this up. Um, there you go. So let's go to enable SSH support um, for user sessions. Um, open that up as well. And let's open up SSH server as well. It's the daemon, right? Um, otherwise, I'm going to turn the firewall off. Um, just because, again, this is a test environment. It's not super important to me. But if you want to set your firewall rules, here's where you would do so. Um, and that's just it. Um, so it's going to tell you your system version. Um, and you are pretty much good to go. So you can right quit, save those changes. And then after that, we can do a Nix OS flag install and uh, cross our fingers that we didn't set up any wrong parameters, right? So yeah, um, and this, this is again where I think that infrastructure as code really comes into handy, is this is something you can really write once and run everywhere. Um, there's a little bit of configuration that still needs to come to it, of course, but you can set all of your users if you want defaults, um, default packages, um, you can set, you know, firewall rules um, out of the gate, and it just makes it really easy. I think it's a really interesting thing that um, other operating systems don't have, especially looking at, like, SUSE. Um, nothing against it. Yast is a great um, utility. I don't think anyone's going to fight you on that, but the problem with Yast is it's not um, super easy to configure if you're not directly on bare metal or you're not SSH into the server, right? So I think this is, it, it, it's really its own use case here. And there we go. Uh, it's installing, but it's really its own use case. So um, uh, I think that's really interesting. The last step of NixOS install is going to be set the uh, the password for the root user, right? Um, you could, it is saying you could do um, no install, uh, no password to disable it. Uh, that's for an unattended installation. So again, that's going to come back down to these hooks we're talking about, where you could entirely run this through the click of a single button and start up a cluster of servers, right? Um, I think that's the dream in cloud environments right now. I know I work on a cloud team, and uh, that's that's kind of what we configure. Uh, we work through like AWS, so they have you know their own AMIs and tools. But let's say you're trying to run your own data center with your own cloud environment, or you're using something where you want to actually have your own uh, vendor independent solution. I really think NixOS does a great job. So I'm going to take a break, and uh, I'll come back when it's done. Alrighty. And uh, we're coming back to it. Um, once you're done with the installation, assuming everything goes well, uh, you're going to set a password. So we're just going to make that password Jared for the root account. Uh, if I click into it, right, there we go. And then retype the password, and you are pretty much all set. So the installation is finished, and now let's go for a reboot. And uh, yeah, we should be set. Um, biggest thing here is that it's going to need to cut out the optical drive, so that's on me, actually. Stop the machine here, right? And uh, I'm going to unmount that drive real quick. Do a force unmount on it, and then restart it. So, go into it, machine. We're going to do a reset. Here we go. And you're going to get a new grub device, uh, or a new grub loader, right? So this is going to be what it's going to look like by default. You're just going to go into NixOS default. And here we go. So, sorry, a little bit of configuration going on here uh, as I get the window going, but we are pretty set. So, it's going to welcome you to NixOS. It's going to do all of its base installs, and uh, we should be about good to go. Alrighty, and uh, we are now at the uh, the login screen. So let's log in with our root account that we set up right. We had a password set. Log in with that, gonna take a second, here we go. And uh, let's just add a user so we can kind of see that process, right? So user add, we're gonna put a flag C, name them uh, default user or something like that, right? And we're gonna put flag M to put the home directory and we'll set that again to default underscore user. Give it a second, there it goes. So we do a password and set it to for default underscore user. We'll set that to user. So there you go, you can SU into default user. Um, and there you go, um, I actually failed to create the home directory, um, but that's not too important. So let's exit, go back to the root account so we can install a package. So NixOS does packages just a little bit different. Um, so the most important thing about it is that it actually either has to look at the cache or compile it. Um, which can be a hassle. It's going to take longer than a lot of other package managers. A lot of distributions are known for their blazingly fast package management. 
um, but what's really neat about that is that you can actually set a specific version. So let's just choose a really simple, really easy to compile package. So I've got a package search right here. Uh, let's do screen fetch. That's a, that's a tool I like to use a lot. So you can pretty much just copy um, this command. So you're going to make sure uh, it's going to default to not NixOS, but you're going to do it on NixOS, right? Uh, that's not going to change anything for us here, but you can just copy that or let's just type it out, right? So it's going to be nixenv, that's going to be the, uh, the package manager tool, flag i is for installation. We're going to do nixos.screenfetch, right? And that's going to be pretty default for a lot of these is um, nixos. Or, uh, I think you'll see on non nixos, it's going to be slightly different as nix packages or pkgs. Uh, and just like that, it's going to be installed. So we can clear that and we can run a screen fetch, right? There you go, it's got its own nice little cute logo. Um, and it's going to be showing, you know, we're using VMware and it's got all, all the information about the system, right? Um, so that is the default way to install packages, but there's also another way to install packages that's going to be a bit different, right? All right, so let's say um, we don't want to install a package from the actual command line. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you would want to do that, right? Um, so that's again one of the benefits of Nix is we can use Nix OS to actually um, build these um, at time of building the operating system, or you can do updates again through configuration files. So to do so, we're going to use Vim again, and we're going to look at that same folder, actually, that same file that we built this with. So it's going to be uh, etc nixos configuration.nix. This is going to look really similar. So again, you're going to have that flag we removed. So we have that bootloader grub device equals dev sda. Uh, you're going to have the host name set to my nixos. These are the parameters we set in the ISO during the install, right? So we go down here. Um, and you're going to find environment.systempackages and this is where the magic happens. So let's say we want to install Python 3.8, actually let's install Python 2.7, right? So that would just be Python 2.7 and what we do is we're going to save those changes and then we're going to do a, uh, we can clear that, we're going to install this through nixos rebuild switch. And again, uh, this is going to be a file that's going to be cached, uh, most likely, because Python 2.7 is pretty common, right? Um, so you don't need to have, like, um, to build this from source, it's going to be cached, um, and it's going to be a lot faster of an installation, but Nix is still not the fastest package manager in the world, so you're going to see it's going to take some time to do that, right? So I just found Python 2.7, and... Um, it's building it right now, putting in the sim links so you can easily access it uh, from the binaries. And um, it's going to update, again, everything in the system, right? So it's updating Grub2 menu. You're not going to usually update that when you're um, installing a package, but it's entirely looking over that file etc nixos configuration.nix, right? So we can clear that. Then we can run Python. And now we're in Python 2.7, right? So pretty neat. Uh, that's how you can install a package uh, for the whole system. And then again, uh, take that configuration file, serve it out to your Docker containers, your cloud provider, um, or however else you're managing your instances, and you can entirely replicate this instance, right? So hopefully you learned something about NixOS or something about Linux. I know this is a pretty basic bare bones server overview, um, but I think it's a really cool operating system, and um, I'm definitely gonna run it on my bare metal servers. Um, so if you, by chance, decide to run NixOS, let me know how it goes. Thanks, guys.